to talk about today is uh, 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 the use of uh, a notion, an idea that, that cropped up several times, and namely that uh, the, uh, the idea of relevance and the role it plays in particular uh, in, 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 in culture, both, uh, I mean, so both at the level of face-to-face uh, uh, -face interaction, small interaction, microprocesses, uh, and uh, also the, the community effect they may have at, at the population level. Uh, and uh, I will be talking uh, rather informally about that point, some ideas, uh, um, especially after all the partying of last night. Uh, um, so I, I will start with a, a, a very rapid uh, kind of primer on, on relevance theory. Of course, everybody should know it all by heart, but let's imagine that it might not be exactly so. Uh, uh, but I will be very rapid on it, and so those who have no idea of what we're talking about, I will get some inkling that there might be some readings, but we won't get much more than that. And, and then I will look at some implications. In particular, I want to discuss an issue that came up and I, which I think is really important here, is uh, uh, the debate uh, between, uh, that has been more or less implicit between uh, uh, Gerger and Yuri uh, uh, regarding pedagogy uh, and, and the role of relevance in pedagogy and the extent to which pedagogy is a distinct mechanism or a distinct stage in the evolution and the ontogenetic development of communication ability or whether it's just a use, a particular use of communication. So I want to uh, <coughs> throw some ideas uh, to, uh, on, on that. And actually, I, I'm quite open for this, this morning for interruptions, not just for uh, uh, clarification, but also for discussion, in particular on that topic. Uh, and, and then I will talk of uh, our implications of the relevance theory uh, for, for uh, the study of culture. Uh, if, uh, yeah, some people who don't know relevance theory was initially developed by two people, uh, that's J.J. Wilson of University College London and myself, and other many, many other people who have contributed to it. Okay, so, so b b basically, uh, 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 relevance theory was, was started as, as a uh, a theory of pragmatics that is of the interpretation of utterances in context in, in the posterity in the line of, of uh, the suggestion that the philosopher Paul Grice had developed uh, uh, in his famous William James lectures in 1967 uh, at uh, uh, Harvard. The lectures were not published for many, many years, but a, a typescript, which actually had been typed by Deirdre, uh, uh, was circulated uh, in photocopies for many, many years. And that's probably one of the most influential types in the history of the uh, humanities and social sciences. Uh, uh, what we tried to do, uh, and so what, 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 what uh, Greis was, what was doing is uh, uh, su su suggesting that the interpretation of that was in context is, is guided by, by, by uh, uh, some uh, tacit expectations that, that uh, uh, interlocutors may have regarding each other. Uh, and it took the form in Greis of uh, the expectation that the, 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 the speaker uh, uh, would uh, uh, be cooperative in a way he characterized and that this being cooperative, uh, ab abiding by what he called the cooperative principle, uh, uh, would uh, uh, particularly be developed by uh, following a certain number of maxims of conversation. Uh, uh, I won't go into the details here. So, so in, he had this principle, which was a normative principle, maxims which were normative, uh, normative maxims. Uh, this principle of these maxims could be uh, uh, flouted or violated with a number of uh, pra pragmatic effects. Uh, um, what we tried to do uh, uh, were two things simultaneously. On one hand, we, we tried to ground uh, uh, this uh, approach to, to human communication and to, in particular to the problem how you put together uh, the semantic content of an utterance uh, as provided by your knowledge of a language and contextual information in order to find out what the speaker meant for us. Since in communication we're not in, in what the word mean per se, but the, what the word mean per se is a means to an end, which is to find out what the speaker meant. Uh, uh, so, so, so we, we, we uh, uh, wanted to ground uh, uh, this process in, in a richer cognitive uh, context because it's a cognitive process. It's both social, it involves two uh, interlocutors or more, uh, uh, but it's a, it's, it's, it's a mental process of inferring from 
the decoding of a sentence and the context information what the speaker meant. And it's uh, more specifically, it's, 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 a, it's a cognitive process uh, which is about attributing a certain kind of intention to, to a speaker. And so it's a kind of mind reading. But you, what you're trying to mind read in this case is a speaker's meaning, which is, and a speaker's meaning is a certain kind of intention, is a content, is intention to convey a certain content to an audience. Uh, uh, so we wanted to ground that in a richer and more justified and, and realistic and testable uh, cognitive uh, uh, context. And also in doing that, we felt uh, this led to, to a, a kind of fairly radical revision of the Greisen approach, uh, uh, where, where no normative considerations didn't come up uh, anymore. But so basically, the basic idea was that what was guiding uh, of the process of interpretation context uh, uh, w w was uh, 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 were consideration of relevance, uh, and, and that this sufficed to, to explain everything, uh, 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 the, how the process worked, uh, and uh, that uh, um, this consideration of relevance uh, um, uh, were, were not exactly of, an, of a normative type. So it's a different picture from 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 crisis. Uh, uh, so the notion so for that, we the notion of relevance has been present in, in pragmatics, is present in Greis, and practically all people who have proposed pragmatic approaches, the notion that uh, there is some kind of expectation of relevance in, in, in communicating information is, is, is trivial, it's common sense, uh, but typically relevance uh, remains uh, un undefined or poorly defined or defined by a list of uh, uh, types of forms of relevance and so on. And so what we, we attempted was to, to characterize a notion of relevance that uh, was uh, uh, re relevant to the development of, of, of cognitive psychology. Uh, 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 and, uh, uh, and so that's what I will start with. And this notion of relevance is not meant to capture the, the, uh, your intuition about uh, what you mean when you use the word relevance, which actually doesn't translate easily uh, in, in all languages, but rather to, to pick on a, a property that plays, we, we, we argue, a kind of crucial role in, in psychological processes. And, and the notion of relevance we, we, we developed has to do st uh, start from consideration of cognitive efficiency. Uh, um, so, so, so you know, when you talk about efficiency for any kind of process, be it industrial production, uh, the bodily movement, uh, uh, or, uh, or, or cognition, <coughs> it's always a question of a balance of uh, cost and benefit. That's what efficiency is about. And, and, and in this case, the cost of mental processes in general, so I'm not, I'm not talking about communication, I'm talking about cognition in general, it, it is a mental effort, or by which I just mean expenditure of energy. Sometimes effort is meant in, in psychology as something that you're aware of. I just mean it's expenditure of, uh, uh, of energy in the brain, basically. Uh, 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 and, and what you get from, from having the, the, the brain work, then do, do cognitive work, uh, it, it, it are, are cognitive effects, that is, effects that, 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 that consist in, in hopefully, uh, uh, an improvement of your, 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 your knowledge, uh, you know, the, the data you have about the, the, the world. So the improvement can be in having more information, having information that's more likely to be true, having it be better <coughs> organized, having also information that can guide action, and so on. So anyhow, the, your, your basically cognition it, 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 uh, it is an investment in, 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 in uh, gaining information about uh, the world and oneself, including oneself, that, that may uh, end up gui guiding action or further cognitive uh, steps. And, and, and so cognitive efficiency, like any kind of efficiency, the question of optimizing the balance between mental effort and cognitive effect on, on, on this view. Now, uh, uh, what this amounts to it differs of, uh, depending on, on the complexity of a cognitive system. And if you, if you think of, of simple cognitive uh, systems like the uh, uh, simpler uh, animals, and to, to, to take a favorite example, philosopher, which has been simplified by philosopher named the frog. Uh, so the frog is there um, doing not very much. It's uh, 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 sitting, uh, uh, and if it's not in a, period, a mating period, uh, so probably there's, it's kind of watching for predators, so it's monitoring for the presence of predator, and mostly it's mo monitoring for the presence of flies. So it's sitting there, and if there's a little black thing that uh, moves, then it, that's likely to be, to be a fly, then it will orient for its strong effort at, at it and swallow it. And, and it doesn't do very much else. I mean, there might be a nice landscape, there might be good music, and so on, so it's not paying any attention. 
so, so basically, it, it's checking, uh, it, it, it check, it checking for, for, for changing the few parameters, and that's it. Again, it's, it's a very, if I was a zoologist, I would say it's a, it's a simplification, but since I'm not, this is not a talk about frog psychology, uh, I can use the philosopher's frog for, for my purpose. So, so the point here is, is that it has fixed objectives, fixed cognitive objectives, to know whether there is or there isn't uh, something to eat, to know whether there is or isn't a predator, uh, uh, and that's it. Uh, 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 basically, uh, or in some situations, sometimes whether there is an present a possible potential mate. Uh, um, and uh, 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 this contrasts uh, greatly uh, w w with the kind of cognitive activities that human beings are involved in, uh, where there is no fixed uh, sc scope. Of course, we have, we have lots of fixed objectives. Uh, uh, all, all the time, but basically we make a kind of massive investment in cognition uh, uh, w without any expectation of direct return. So, so we, 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 we are involved all the time, and that's why you came to the summer school uh, uh, in improving our knowledge uh, of the world. I hope it works. Uh, 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 and uh, with no, we have the benefits uh, that we may expect may be very indirect, and we're not sure whether they will materialize, or if they materialize ever, probably a great amount of information that we accumulate and that we reorganize and think about and so on doesn't ever guide action except that it may play a very indirect causal role uh, uh, in us. So, so, so for, for humans, uh, what, what you have is you cannot describe the goal as, uh, uh, you don't have a fixed goal, it's, it's, uh, you're trying to maximize something, you're trying to maximize uh, b b basically uh, to improve as much as you can. Uh, uh, not necessarily in every direction, but improve as much as you can your, your, your understanding, your knowledge uh, about the world and the kind of action you can have in it uh, uh, um, without uh, direct uh, uh, goals, goals with it. And in terms of effort, one may imagine that the, the, uh, uh, the investment of a frog are, are more or less fixed. I mean, a certain amount of energy is available for its cognitive task. Uh, 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 and in the case of humans, uh, first, the amount of energy that we expend in, 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 in cognition is huge. I mean, the brain, which is a small part of the body, uses, what, 20% of energy. It's, what, it's about, uh, in terms of, of weight, it's... Uh, in terms of weight, it's 2% of the body. Sorry, how, how much was that? It's 2% of the body. Yeah, okay, so 2, two to 20. So anyhow, it's, it's, it, 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 got, it, it uses a lot of... A lot of, a lot of but, but, but bodily energy, so we invest a lot, in, and we can invest more or less. I mean, that we can. Uh, uh, people who are here are probably people who invest a lot in cognition, and so, so some uh, other people pay invested, but everybody invests quite a lot in, in, in any case. So the problem of optimizing the balance between effort and, and effect it, it takes a, a more dramatic form if you want, first because it's a high investment op op operation, and because the amount of effort that you can. Uh, uh, invest can be modulated, uh, 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 it's great anyhow, but it can be even increased. A a a and, and, the effect, and there is no fixed effect that you're trying to achieve, and the country it's, it's an open, you're trying to maximize something which is not clearly de de defined. Uh, 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 and in particular, the, the, the uh, 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 part of the problem of efficiency can be described in terms of what may, might be called an attention bottleneck. So, so, so unlike the frog, we, we can listen to music and look at everything and, you know, think about how the lens work and look at every single face. So the number of stimuli that you may attend to at every given moment in the environment and that you have a capacity to do so is huge. So you have a lot of information in the environment that's available all the time for all the sense and so on. Plus, you have a huge amount, unlike the frog, of uh, information in memory uh, uh, which you can, with which you can do two things. You can bring it to bear on interpreting information for perception or you can basically regurgitate it. You know, you do, do, you know, you, you, you can ruminate. Uh, uh, that, that is, if there's nothing too interesting in the environment, uh, uh, you may start thinking about thoughts which you haven't fruitfully exploited, which always I mean, at this moment there must be some of you are doing exactly that. Uh, 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 and you're probably right it because it's probably more useful to you to do that than listen to what I'm saying. I think there are too many of you like that. Uh, um, uh, but, but what happens is, is that if we want to, to do intensive work on cognitive inputs, uh, uh, either from memory or from the environment, uh, that is to, to, to treat them in an attentional manner, which is how you may squeeze somehow more 
uh, effect from, from them, but then we can do that about just a very small amount of uh, uh, information at the same time, very small as compared to all the information available. So a crucial issue is what do you, you know, to what do you pay attention in the environment, if anything, uh, 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 and what information you bring to bear from the environment on, 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 on whatever inputs you're treating. And again, you may treat just a, the input that you're focusing on may not be at all from the environment, it may be some regulated uh, info information uh, for, for, for memory. So optimizing the choice uh, of uh, input that you process and the context for memory in which you process it is a crucial, uh, it's crucial to, to cognitive efficiency. It's, uh, uh, Again, if, if, if you chose more or less at random uh, uh, some, some item of the environment, an item for memory, it would be just a total waste of, of, of energy. It's, it's a very uh, uh, complex uh, uh, problem of, of, of selection of information. And, and, and we, we, so the notion of relevance, so, so human cognitive efficiency is a matter of allocating attention or resources to perception and memory inputs capable of yielding important cognitive effects. I mean, we again, lots of combination of information from memory and what you're attending to will be totally, totally useless and always, on the contrary, may, 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 may be quite productive. And this allocation of resources, I would suggest, I mean, unless you are asked, is, is, is a dynamic process. So it's, a, it, it's changing all the time. It's, a, it's a, uh, and I'll say a bit more about that in, in, in a minute. So, so we, 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 the way we define relevance is based on these considerations about uh, cognitive efficiency. Uh, uh, so, so the issue again is uh, I'm focusing on is the selection of inputs. So, so and relevance, it, it, we think of it as a, a property of inputs to cognitive processes. And so you can, inputs can be, you can talk, uh, think of input at a different level. You can make, think of input as a distal stimulus, you might say, you know, uh, with this, uh, uh, the, the sentence uh, projected here the, I, is relevant or is not relevant, so that's a distal stimulus. You may, you, you may think uh, of in, inputs uh, as the result of a perception. I mean, you, uh, or you, you, uh, inputs can be internally generated, again, something you get from memory or an hypothesis that you're considering. So whatever is an input to a cognitive process uh, uh, can be judged in terms of, the, of, 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 of its relevance. And, and what does this relevance consist in? Well, first, uh, uh, for an input to be relevant at all, it has to yield cognitive, its processing has to, to yield cognitive effects. I think that it, uh, uh, it has to bring about some modification uh, 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 of your representation of things, of your thoughts, which can be of different types. Again, it can be that you're more secure, uh, your, your confidence in your beliefs may be greater, you may have new beliefs, new, 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 new evidence, you may revise or cancel old beliefs, you may modify the way they are organized, you may develop new plans for action, whatever, but, but uh, you, 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 are, you have to have some, some kind of cognitive effects, and also the greater these cognitive effects, Ketteris Paribus, the greater the relevance of, of input. Uh, um, so, so for instance, uh, um, if you're told that uh, 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 you, 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 are, you are ill, uh, by the doctor, that's relevant, it has a number of, of effects, uh, which are in large part practical, but before being practical, then you have to represent them, so be cognitive. Uh, if you're told uh, m m more specifically uh, that, that uh, you've got the flu that will last 10 days, that's more relevant because it has all the consequences that uh, you, it implies that you're ill, so it has all the consequences of being ill, and there are more consequences that you can derive. More, in, it's a case where more precise information uh, y y yields uh, great, greater relevance, uh, uh, um, which is not always the case. I'm going into greater details, we don't have cognitive effects. So more, what's more informative is not always more relevant. It's more relevant, more information is more relevant to the extent that it yields greater cognitive effects. Uh, but another thing that, that we want to argue is that relevance is not just, because it's a cost-benefit kind of thing, it's not just a matter of the benefits in terms of cognitive effects, it's also a matter uh, of, of, of the cost. Uh, 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 and uh, in processing some information, uh, uh, you, you invest mental effort, and it may be greater or lesser. And, and uh, the greater it is, the lesser the relevance of the input. An input which is harder to process uh, is uh, a, a, a less relevant input. Let me give you another uh, example. Suppose, suppose you, you're a caterer, you're catering for, 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 for a party of, of, 
uh, uh, 10 people, and, and you know that some are uh, vegetarians. So you might be uh, uh, informed that three members of a party are vegetarians, and that's just the kind of information that you need. You get all the cognitive effects you, 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 you want, that is, you, know, you know what you have to prepare, and the effort is very small. Uh, uh, su suppose you were told that, that three of the members of the party rather are Buddhists. Uh, uh, it's more informative than being vegetarian, uh, many more things. But for, for you, the cognitive effects uh, are, are not greater. In fact, they're lesser because you can be a Buddhist and not be a vegetarian, so it's not automatic. So there's a chance that they're vegetarian, but you're not sure. And there are a lot of other consequences which are of no uh, uh, further effects for, for, for you. Uh, so, so it's, in fact, uh, although it's more informative, it's less relevant on the effect side. And in terms of effort, knowing that there are free vegetarian or free Buddhists is more or less the same kind of cognitive effort. Now, uh, so, so, so free Buddhist is, is, is less relevant in this context uh, than, than free vegetarian. Now, suppose that instead of being given one or the other descendants, you've given a little booklet with a, which has a, a, a one-page uh, portrait of every one of the uh, members uh, of, a, of a guest, uh, and which includes whether uh, information whether vegetarian or not. So that will give you the information that you need, but you need much more effort. So but your booklet is less relevant than being just told they are free vegetarian. Uh, uh, not, not again on the effect side, because on the effect side you have all the effects that you need, but on the effort side it requires more, more, more effort. So I hope these examples can illustrate a bit uh, uh, what, what, what I have in mind. Uh, um, just, just one point, you might again, I say you might interrupt and ask questions. So it's a question that you, one of you at least should have asked. Uh, 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 <laughs> It's a standard question we get is, you know, can you have relevance just as a quantitative notion, you know, amount of effect, amount of effort, when typically relevance <coughs> is relevance to a goal, to an idea, to, 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 to the ongoing conversation, and, and, and so on, to, to an interest. Uh, um, and uh, uh, so again, if you think more intuitively about relevance, you don't you think of relevance always in a more qualitative manner. It's related to, to, to some issue at end. Uh, uh, and our uh, answer to that would be to this question that you failed to ask uh, uh, would be uh, if you think about it, uh, suppose you have an interest, so for instance, you're, you're, you're interested in, in, in the relationship between cognition and culture, uh, and you're genuinely interested in that topic, uh, uh, then information, so probably you have some background information for that. Uh, 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 you know, if you have an interest in cognition and culture, but I don't really know what cognition means, and I'm not too sure about culture. I've just developed this interest half an hour ago. It's not a genuine interest. You have a genuine interest, you have background information, and that means that any information, uh, new information, new input that, 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 that can inter, uh, interface and from, uh, with the background information that you have will have effects. So somebody who has an interest in cognition and culture will get more uh, cognitive effects. Uh, uh, from new information about uh, cognition and culture, uh, Catalyst Paribus, and someone who has no interest in the topic whatsoever, just because the person with interest has a rich background information for, for which can, uh, uh, from which new inform in which new information can provide co cognitive effects. In, uh, so, so an interest will translate uh, in terms of greater cognitive effect. It will also translate in terms of lesser effort. Somebody who has a strong interest uh, in cognition in culture, as compared to somebody who has the same knowledge but who has lost the interest, uh, has this information very easily activated. So uh, she doesn't have to remember things she learned a while ago and so on, but, but, but she has that on her mind, you know. And, and, and so getting the, the, the consequences involve le, 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 less cognitive effect. Same thing if you think of co uh, relevance uh, to, to the point to reach at a certain point in a conversation, uh, it, people have in mind. Uh, 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 or, or when you read the text in the book, in the narrative, and so on, people are, have in mind uh, a present, very easy, act, still activated, or easily, uh, 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 easily accessible information that was already uh, uh, exchanged in the conversation or presented in, in the text. So that new, a new uh, sentence, a new utterance, a new piece of information that's relevant in, in that context. Uh, 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 Cause it requires less, first, it has a context in which it's relevant, and second, cause it requires less effort than, than, than being relevant in a context that's not being activated. Nevertheless, if I were to interrupt uh, what I'm saying, I was like, ah! there is a fire in, in the corridor, which would be a change of topic, wouldn't be relevant to, to the present, because it would be highly relevant, nevertheless, because, we, of course, the, the initial cost of changing topic 
uh, in terms of effort would be a bit greater if I just go on speaking, but the effects would uh, justify the, the change of, uh, of, of topic. So that's the answer to the question you didn't ask. Uh, uh, yes. No, 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 yes. Uh, yeah. you know, it's another question that sure. must have been asked, and, uh, yes, go ahead. and uh, sure. uh, so uh, when, you're, when you're exposed to this, uh, the, this way of putting it, that the relevance is the property of the input. Yeah. Okay. So and and you describe the bottleneck problem, and, and so it's the, in a sense uh, you are uh, you are describing a. a continuous need to make decisions about allocation of energy and making choices of uh, what to process, what to not. However, in a sense, what, you know, uh, what is relevant uh, and how much, you know, what's the cost benefit, it's kind of after the fact. You only figure out after the whole processing has been done. So, and on the other hand, you, you would yeah. expect that it would actually drive the selection process. Uh, it's a very good point. I'm talking about it in two slides now. Yes, it's, you're quite right. It's, it's, a, it's a classical question. It's a, it's a very justified question. I'll make a suggestion regarding that. Uh, um, so, so, so basically, uh, um, if cognitive, eff so cognitive efficiency is a matter of selecting uh, the most relevant inputs, uh, both from the environment and from memory, and, uh, and processing in, in the way so as to squeeze the maximum effect for all this effort, basically. Uh, 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 and, and uh, uh, of course, uh, you know, given the massive investment that humans have in cognition, uh, there's been selective pressure throughout mm -hmm. the history of this development of these cognitive abilities. And our ancestors, and how back you, you have, to, you know, I don't know how, how back, far back you can go to find this simply curiosity, you might say, this investment in cognition beyond just uh, answering some precise question about immediate goals. Uh, 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 there's been pressure for optimizing the cost-benefit balance that is for, for maximizing the relevance of the inputs uh, that, 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 that you're processing. So, so, so we, we propose as, as, a, as a principle, pri here we are use principle in terms of a general descriptive statement, they are not normative statements at all, uh, 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 so like Kreis's uh, cooperative principle, that human cognition is geared towards a maximization of relevance. Again, it's been constant selective pressure for optimizing uh, uh, cognitive efficiency and that translates uh, by by, by, by uh, selecting uh, those inputs. Uh, again, we have lots of inputs which are competing for our, for our attention at all, uh, uh, potentially with competing for our attention, uh, and our ability to select the, uh, those which are mo most relevant uh, uh, determines our, our, our cognitive efficiency. I mean, we all here bright intellectuals, and probably part of being a bright intellectual is our ability to be very good at uh, selecting relevant inputs and not paying attention to others. Uh, um, so, again, why should this be so? For, for, for simple evolutionary reasons. It's just a question of efficiency. Just, uh, just as there is evolutionary pressure for optimizing the, the, the expense of energy in muscular movements, so, so the, your, 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 uh, your bodily movements you, you can expect are, have, are, are geared, and, and the way they organize, so the very organization, the way muscles are related to, to, to bones and so on and so on, is organized in such a manner that, that, that the, the type of movement that you, uh, it's advantageous to achieve can be achieved uh, w with a minimal expense of energy. Same thing with mental energy and, 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 and mind's movement, so to speak. So that, that, that's the, the general evolutionary reason. So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's one type of selective pressure, which is not for the, for, for the emergence of a, of a new mechanism, but which is a pressure for, 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 for uh, 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 one variable getting a higher, as high as possible value. Yes? Just a small question. Relevance determines how all attention resources are allocated, yes. but to determine relevance, you should process the inputs. So well, that's the same question I did as you right. It's a good question, it's the same question that more, more precisely than. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I will answer it in, in, in now. So, how? How do you do that? Uh, yeah. And so, how do you. So, indeed, a, a classical a worry that you've both now expressed is that, you know, in order to decide. Uh, which of the relevant input is, 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 is uh, which of the input is the most relevant? You'll have to look at all of them, or at least many of them, and so you have to make a process of selection. Selection, a process of selection itself has a cost, uh, uh, and, and indeed you won't know whether something has been relevant until you've done it. So basically, you should, uh, you know, you might think you'd have to compute the relevance of each of the candidates to, to decide which one is the most relevant. And by then, you've lost all the energy you had, and you go to bed and you know, finish. Uh, uh, um, 
but but it doesn't have to be so. I mean, you could first you could make the same argument about bodily movements. And you know, if if I want to to to, to take my watch, I could do lots of different movements. <laughs> Whatever. But I don't. I mean, I, I hone in on, on the right movement, a movement which is the most efficient. Typically, that we, we do that in our body. Work. So it is that we compute all the possible movements and decide on on, on the best one. Uh, 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 you, you absolutely don't need uh, any. Uh, you don't need to compute anything, basically. So, so, so the, the, I, I will have a paper on web website which is called Modularity and Relevance, where I discuss this thing in greater detail. But uh, just be, it, what happens is you have a competition uh, a, a, among uh, 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 procedure, mental procedure. I would talk of modules, but since Sudari has said with modules is not the right notion, and I've not yet answered him. Uh, uh, is wrong, of course, but uh, <laughs> when we have to establish that. Uh, uh, so, so, so basically, what happens, one way of looking at it is this. If you have lots of inputs, uh, which are being mo monitored at a low level, I mean, we monitor many variables in the environment all the time. So noises, uh, change of movements, colors, and so on, without, uh, in a sub-attentional manner. So, so each time some, uh, 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 each stimulus uh, which gets this low level of, of attention uh, uh, gives an initial a activation to a procedure, a kind of cognitive procedure that would be able to, 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 to process it in, in, in greater uh, detail. So, so for instance, uh, you may yeah, uh, take, take the, the, the party effects where you get a lot of conversation. So you, you're involved in one con conversation, but you're still monitoring what people are saying around you. So there's some kind of low level processing which, which uh, give an initial activation to, to procedure of speech uh, interpretation. You don't go the whole way, you don't really follow it, but you have, you're monitoring well enough to, to pick some bits that might uh, suggest that it's worth investing later resources. Uh, uh, and so what I want to claim is that initially activated procedures or modules, if you prefer, compete for resources. That is, you're not going, there's no way that all the uh, 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 Inputs which get uh, 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 this initial low-level uh, processing uh, uh, can, can, can get full processing at an intentional level. So they, they, they're competing for resources, and, and I would uh, argue for a kind of uh, updated, modernized pandemonium mo model, which I, I won't go uh, into. So, so basically, they're all shouting out, you know, think of each procedure or each model. I've got an input, I've got an input, and the one which shouts louder gets, uh, gets more blood flow and can go the whole, the whole course. And, 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 and process uh, uh, it, it, it's, its input. So the procedure, or maybe the procedures with greatest expected relevance, gets full activation and, and, and gets to process its input fully. Uh, the expected relevance uh, uh, of a fully active procedure is con constantly updated on the basis of the key relevance. So what happens first, you, the, 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 a given procedure, a given module, keeps getting uh, uh, sufficient blood flow, sufficient energy, uh, to, to go on processing it, it, its input, uh, uh, as long as it, it's a win in the competition, the other uh, uh, models, the other processes are still shouting, I've got a good input, I've got a good input, uh, uh, and the, the module or the modules which are actually getting uh, the resources, which are the center of attention, have to deliver. So, 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 so if they fail to deliver, we have the, the, the other wins. So you, 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 just as in bodily movement, you can have, look just at incremental. You don't have to look at whether you're reaching the goal. You may look at incremental effect. Uh, effect that is the, the, uh, are the cognitive effects on the rise? Uh, uh, is are the, or are the, in which case that good? Is the effort I'm making to get this cognitive on the rise that's bad? Uh, 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 is it declining, in which case other, other procedures can get. So if you're really, f so I, I won't go into that, but if you think of, of the way attention moves from one object to another, it's often in matters of seconds, or, 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 or a fairly short span, uh, I, I would, the, the kind of model I would argue for is that uh, this is the result from an ongoing competition rather than from any uh, uh, which is based on very low level indication of potential relevance. When I talk about expected relevance, it's not, it's not being computed. It's, I know, uh, you have two questions. Uh, uh, um, it, it, on low-level low, low in, in, in indications, uh, 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 and uh, uh, the, the, uh, the level of rele expected relevance in that sense, which again, for, for, for low-level indications, which is sufficient for the procedure to, 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 go, to go its full course, depends on the strength of, 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 of a competition. Again, it's a, it's a whole topic that I won't go into de detail here. But the point is, imagine, you, think of it in evolutionary terms. Uh, uh, um, 
and imagine that the system evolves so as to uh, a, a, a richly modular system, a system with lots of procedures which are relatively specialized to, to process different kind of input, evolves, in, in, I'm talking about biological evolution, uh, in, in the way it allocates its resources, can it uh, uh, move towards a better uh, allocation that will indeed move towards a greater efficiency that is a greater tendency to allocate uh, its, its uh, uh, resources to, to, to uh, 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 the processing of input which have greater relevance. And I think it's easy to see that in principle it can. I will now answer two questions, uh, Larry and, and then Daniel. Um, with, with body movement you have uh, the way in it's not dynamic in the sense in that you have procedural knowledge that you, mm -hmm. you, know, you reach for it this way rather than the other which is not necessarily computing. You may have computed once uh, what's the most efficient way, but you uh, uh, don't continue. It's not a, it's not a competitive uh, process. And I was just wondering if you, there was a similar kind of you know parallel procedural knowledge kind of thing, conceptual procedural knowledge, uh, 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 knowledge and, and in a sense that was, uh, that, that was out of, that, that, that bypassed the competition. Uh, one argument I suppose you could make is that's what the modules provide, but um, you just described this as, as dynamic competition between the modules, so I was just no, I, get, get you, I, get you, I was giving the example of just teaching, so that's a kind of uh, single procedure which I, I have a routine for it and so on. And, and so there are some mental compu computation where I have a routine too. I mean, if I have to multiply two by two, I don't, uh, you know, once I start doing it, it will go its course and it doesn't. Uh, uh, but the thing, thing uh, to go back to, but things you, uh, you're walking on a mo mountain uh, path. Where, where it's really a question of where you put your foot in. There you, you, you're not you, you're engaging in a conversation, you're not engaging to calculate, but, but there is some low level processes that make you tend to put your foot, uh, uh, on, uh, to modify your speed according to, to, to the difficulty, to uh, choose the right target where to, where to put your foot. So, and, and there are lots of possibilities, competing possibilities uh, between which you adjudicate, and if you're an efficient worker, you do that both in, in, in a way which minimizes your, your energy and, and maximizes. Uh, uh, Those are exceptional walking Well, conditions. whether exceptional or not, they would serve as my anal analogy. I mean, it's, it's, it's good enough. I don't think they're exceptional, but that's, uh, that, that's uh, so, so anyhow, you know, if, if your point is the analogy may have limits, I, will, I agree with No, no, that's not my point. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand the, how um, the, the, the argument about the competition between uh, the, the relevance about the competition between possible I'm not even talking about, even talking about uh, uh, competition. I mean, think of competition among muscles to achieve a, a specific move. And in fact, when muscles get uh, tired, then you tend to, to achieve the same result by recruiting other muscles and so on. So that's, that's what the competition is. But again, you know, that's Larry's that's talking about culture. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but wait a minute. The, the, the reason that you, yeah. the, the competition mm -hmm. with the muscles, is regulated by a specific device in the cerebellum that, that without it you wouldn't. Yeah. So again, it, of course it, it just seems that, there, that when you're talking about similar kinds of processes, the, the analogy you brought yeah. up, he's admitting the possibility that the, the competition is taken out of it. And so I'm just trying yeah. to understand why. why okay, I mean, it, it, I, it, the, uh, the regulation does not, what it, the regulation of body movement does not involve is a representation of alternative possible movements, yes. uh, a calculus of uh, the cost and expected cost and benefit, and then a choice of the right one. So it, it goes ab about mo much more local incremental kind of things, more like you climbing in the fog and so on. So there are a lot of modeling of the way that it occurs. And I think there is a competitive element, but you might know, know more than I do about the role of the cerebellum in, 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 cerebellum in, in, in this. Uh, uh, but again, if my analogy is not too good, uh, I, I will just drop it. Uh, uh, the, the modeling, uh, the idea that, that you have an in invisible hand, just as you do in the economy, uh, that, that, that uh, 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 help with the evolutionary di dimension tends to uh, the fact that it's the work of the invisible hand has been improved for, for evolution, uh, t t tends, tends not, not more than that, tend to optimize the allocation of resources in, in the brain, uh, uh, where, where, where the allocation of resources one between competing procedures is something that's been modeled in many ways a lot of times. That doesn't make it true, but it's, at least it's 
something that those of you are at all familiar with this kind of thing say, yes, it's a possible. One may investigate in that direction. Then. Um, I don't think I'm beating the same dead horse, mm -hmm. uh, but it is a question about how the pandemonium competition mm -hmm. works. So um, it seems to me that there are two uh, related but distinct models about how uh, attention might work with regard to mental mechanisms mm -hmm. and this kind of allocation process that yeah. you're talking about. So one, which is what I think that you're talking about, but I'm not sure, is one in which there are innately specified mental mechanisms modules, right? Uh, and they compete as, um, as distinct entities in this pandemonium competition. Right? Um, uh, another is that um, uh, that low-level attention that you described uh, potentially activates a variety of uh, organized bodies of information, call them schemas if you want to, right? Some of which may have some innate component and some of which may be in entirely um, yep. acquired during the course of maturation. Uh, and those schemas are being, they're distributed over multiple uh, innately specified mental mechanisms, okay? Uh, and it's the schemas that are doing the yelling, as it were, okay? So the pandemonium competition is not between innately specified modules, it's between the schemas. Now, it seems to me that this distinction matters a lot because in the first case, the competition between innately specified modules, um, there is no conflict of interest between them because if they're genetically determined, then they all recognize that they're um, a common entity, as it were. That is, um, uh, selection will have uh, favored their, their uh, teamwork. So just as when uh, a hive of bees is trying to decide um, uh, which new tree hole to move in, uh, different bees yell, as it were, with different strengths on the basis of the qualities of the hole that they've explored, right? Mm -hmm. And the one that is yelling the loudest wins, and that's where the, 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 the group moves to. But there's no conflict of interest between them because they're all closely related, and so they all want to go where the best hole is. Um, uh, but among the schemas, there is a potential conflict of interest, as it were, because they're not innately specified. And so um, they can be, uh, uh, you can have selfish schemas um, in, in which case, um, uh, you don't have uh, the honesty of the signal because you can have schemas that yell um, too loud, as it were, based on the actual fitness relevance of the information that they're providing. That's a, that's a very interesting suggestion. Uh, uh, my, my take on that is first that mo modules uh, have innate basis, but typically, and many of them are, are, are not innate. So if you think for that your knowledge of English uh, or is modular either because there's a general module or because it's made of lots of specific modules. That's not innate. What's innate is the, the language faculty that allowed you to acquire the culturally specified module of, uh, modular modules of the English language. And I think this goes across the board. So I think basically what we start with, there may be some fully spe innately specified modules, but we start with learning modules, basically, which project acquired modules in great quantity. So, so, uh, 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 and so there's a, I think there's a lot of teamwork going on, but there may be I mean, the, the possibility of actual difference of interest between some modular things, especially if you take a kind of mimetic view, and which here might have a point, uh, is a very interesting one, uh, which may work against uh, optimizing relevance for, for, for the organism, may be parasitized by some yeah. right, it's a good point. I, I don't have more to say about it, but certainly what we're looking But as you say, there's a constant yeah. Evaluation of achieved relevance. Yes, so, so there's not like you can't. No, but the thing of an obsessive idea, or, or a tune from that, you know, yeah. a tune that, you, that keeps going in your mind, you wish it didn't. Right. It's not contributing to relevance, but it's contributing to, to its own di di distribution in the culture, so to speak. Well, so, it, it yeah. could be contributing to relevance if relevance is defined as you've defined it, mm -hmm. just in terms of cognitive efficiency and not in terms of biological fitness consequences, right? Yes. Um, right. Because well, the, the, the selfish schema mm -hmm. could be a very well organized could, body of information. It, it could be, but could also not be, or, or the kind of thing that Pascal was talking about, that is, uh, f you know, thoughts uh, which invade you uh, without data. So, so it's, uh, it's an interesting. Uh, you limit a uh, possible pathology if you want the relevance uh, guys yes. so is it, yes Pascal no, no, very good yeah, no. yeah. Oh, so, I'm, I'm sorry I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. it was your birthday yesterday and not yeah. talking uh, about it. Yeah. Uh, don't you think that uh, a central aspect of the specific uh, initial input uh, guiding the competition mm -hmm. process you described 
could be maybe the emotional balance. That's absolutely can absolutely you can think of emotion as contributing to optimizing levels. I mean, you know, some not necessarily, but the fact that when the, so it's another way in which, uh, of course, uh, if one takes this model, you have both top top down and, uh, and bottom up uh, f factors that tend to optimize levels. So, so you, you, have, you have top down. You are now actively uh, working on a certain uh, reading a book and have a question in mind trying to answer it, and that determines what's. Uh, helps determine what you know, is relevant or not with that potential resource. But you also have modular dispositions to react, for instance, a danger signal or, or, or to your baby crying and so on, uh, 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 which will preempt attention and, 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 and because they come with the presumption of relevance, which again is not always delivered, but still it's, good, it's a good way to, again, it's the tendency to maximize relevance may misfire and misfire is quite often, but if, you react, if uh, uh, danger signals uh, uh, preempt attention, it's a good idea. They tend to be, they tend to be highly relevant. Uh, uh, so emotions, in this sense, uh, uh, can, can, can uh, if they probably hope, someone can signal uh, inputs that, 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 deserve, uh, that deserve attention. So, so the relationship between emotion and attention is, is an interesting one. It's a good, good point. And Pascal? Um, yes, I had a question. Since the um, dynamic process is supposed to be guided by low-level sort of gradients of you know, effects and mm -hmm. Uh, you're predicting that the um, any system guided by this relevance process will tend to be trapped in local maxima. Yes. Very often. So, yeah. and you have examples of that. That is, that be there might be a an optimal interpolation of some utterance, for example. But to get there from a sort of close optimal interpolation, you'd have to go down in terms of. Effects will go up in terms of effort, but therefore you don't reach it, and therefore you miss it. When you come to references, I will come to this now. The, the process, if there's some extra element that, 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 that figures. But yes, I think we often trap the local optimum. Again, when I do this, on the one hand, it's really important to understand that human cognition is geared towards the maximization of relevance, and on the other hand, it's not doing that well. But it's doing well enough that, and that's what I want to, to, to talk about, that it has a number of consequences. Because we eat, we're all relevance seekers. Uh, it is to some extent possible to predict to which stimuli uh, a stimuli an individual will be paying attention among those who, which are present in as much as you can uh, guess which will seem more relevant to, to that individual, which background information will be accessed to process the stimulus, uh, and, and in fact what inference will be derived from this input. If you, if you think about it, I mean, if, we didn't, if we didn't know that we all got a bad elements, we were, and you're working with someone, you have no way whatsoever to predict uh, what, what she is thinking about, what, uh, where thoughts are going, you, which of the events taking place in the streets she, she's attending to and so on. Well, in fact, you're quite good at doing that. You're quite good bec because uh, she's guided, as you are, by relevance consideration. So if there's an, element, uh, an event taking place that's uh, relevant for you for reasons that you share because of common background with her, you may assume that she's paying attention to it, that she's drawing on background information which is the same as yours. And there's nothing obvious without the fact that you're guided by relevance. Otherwise, again, you could put together whatever uh, stimulus from, from, from the environment and whatever memory uh, uh, background information, you have no way to predict where people's mind go and the kind of things that uh, Sherlock Holmes does, predicting courses of thought in a very exact manner, would not even be a, a kind of exaggeration of what we're capable of doing, it would be a total absurdity. Hence, in particular, this it's not just that you can predict other people's direction of thought, trains of thought, and, and, and where their attention go, but you can act on it because you can predict it. So you can produce a stimulus on purpose uh, to which people will, are likely to pay attention. So everybody's paid attention to that stimulus because indeed you have a kind of bottom-up uh, uh, tendency to a, a, a device which preempts attention when you have a sudden loud noise. Uh, uh, How did you, you know that? What? How did you know that? It's been studied, uh, there's, there's a very good experiment, I don't remember the reference. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 you can, uh, uh, pre you know, make a good guess, predict to a good extent what inferences they will derive on the basis of these uh, uh, stimuli. In other, in other words, you can guide people's thoughts uh, to some degree. Uh, and it's really linked to the predictability, and predictability is, is linked to the fact that they're relevant seekers. Uh, um, and in particular, you can produce uh, what we've called ostensive stimuli. Uh, uh, stimuli. Uh, uh, an ostensive stimulus is a stimulus that's overtly produced in order to attract an audience's attention and to cause this audience to derive some specific inferences. 
I mean, I may modify in your environment without you knowing it, so as to cause you to think certain things or to pay attention to certain things. But I may do that in an op overt manner, uh, do, 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 doing that openly. And when I do that openly, it has some further consequences. So, for example, of ostensive stimuli, with many of you discuss, are pointing utterances automatically uh, ostensive stimuli, but lots of different ways of being ostensive. Uh, I'm using the many ostensive cues that have been discussed uh, in, in, in this school. And, and this yields uh, 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 the second uh, principle in the theory, which is the cognitive principle. Again, the cognitive principle was that human cognition is geared towards maximization of, of, of relevance. Uh, the cognitive principle concerns uh, a very specific type of stimu stimulus, uh, and that is a, a ostensive stimulus, communicative behavior, if you prefer, overtly communicative behavior. And, and, and the principle is that every ostensive stimulus, uh, uh, every communicative behavior, every utterance, communicates a presumption of its own optimal relevance. And why does it do so? Uh, I think it says why. That's why. Uh, uh, it, it, it does so be because if I am overtly uh, trying to get your attention to something, which is what the attention is, and if your attention automatically goes to what seems most relevant to you, I am certainly uh, thereby uh, uh, conveying that what I want you to pay attention to uh, is relevant enough to deserve your attention, otherwise my action I mean, is a condition of the success of my action, uh, 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 and being relevant enough to deserve your attention is being more relevant than the competition. So when I'm talking to you now, uh, well, I, 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 mean, I hope that you think that my words are more interesting than watching your lambs, your neighbors, or whatever. I, mean, I don't know how successful I am, but that's certainly what I'm, I'm trying to convey to you, that this is worth listening to what I'm saying. Uh, 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 and and how, how, so, so more in fact, and I won't have time to go to it, it conveys a very specific uh, level of relevance. First, it's got to be relevant enough uh, uh, so, so, so that it's more relevant than the competition. And if you think of, you know, you look at stimuli in general, they don't come with such a presumption of relevance. Communicated information uh, comes with such a presumption of relevance, which of course maybe you don't need to accept it. It's not that every communicator succeeds in communicating something that's relevant uh, enough. But that's how uh, the, the thing gets presented. And if you trust uh, the capacity of, uh, uh, of a communicator to produce relevant information, uh, that then you may indeed uh, pay attention the requested attention to the stimulus, and in fact, often enough, that's what, that, that's what we do. I mean, we are attracted to ostensive stimuli in, 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 in this manner. So there's a minimal level which is pretty high, high enough to, to be worth your attention, that means beating the competition. It's not, it's not so so. And, and, and in fact, you can argue that even more relevance uh, than, than that may, 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 may be conveyed is part of optimal relevance, because it's, there's a, at least one joint interest between communicator and addressee, that is that communication should succeed, that is that the communicator should be understood. And if greater relevance helps uh, the comprehension process, then you can expect that in as much as the goals uh, and capacities of, of the communicator uh, are not put in jeopardy, uh, uh, the communicator will try to be as relevant as is possible within the limits of its capacities and preferences. Uh, uh, and this, uh, uh, this guide, and I won't go into it, uh, this gives you a key basically to, to a, a, a process communicated information and to interpret it. So if you're looking for an interpretation, so w w when you have a communicative behavior, again, what you go into is a mind reading uh, stance with a very specific kind of mind reading. You want to read what it is that the communicator was trying to convey. Uh, uh, um, and the, the, the communicator was trying to convey something of which, uh, 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 it, 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 which may, uh, which she had reason to think would be optimally relevant to you, or at least would seem optimally relevant to you, uh, if she's deceiving you. Uh, so, 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 and, and, and this again, I have no time to go into details. Gives you a two, uh, uh, gives you a procedure and, 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 a, and, and a whole thing. So the procedure is follow a, a, a route of least effort in, in developing an interpretation. Follow the route of least effort because effort is one of the components of, 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 of relevance. And if you have nothing else to go by, you at least have that. So good. Take, take interpretive hypothesis in the order in which they come. And, and, and stop when you read, and stop where you have a stopping point. Stop when the expectation of relevance raised by the communicative behavior itself uh, is, is being satisfied. Uh, 
Uh, uh, and of course, this expectation of relevance may be revised in the process, so it may be updated, but that's, I don't go into detail. So basically, what it gives you is, is a specific procedure for interpreting utterances that uh, uh, communicate behavior that applies only to communicate behavior. You can't apply that to, to stimuli in general. It's not the case that, uh, they, again, they don't come with a presumption, a presumption of optimal relevance. So the, the fact that an interpretation of some event in the world is the first one that comes, it, it may, comes to your mind is not an epistemic quality as it is in the case of communication, because it's in the interest of a communicator to uh, want you to have an expectation that comes easily to mind. And, and, and the fact that expectations of relevance are satisfied is not a reason to stop and say, no, I've got the interpretation I need. It works just for communication. That's the reason, actually, to think that this routine is modular. But that's another issue. So only ostensibly, I'm just, that's just repeating now, but, uh, only ostensibly communicated information is presumed to be optimally relevant to the scene. So what it means is that ostension modifies, uh, I mean, if you take the same information, the same behavior, but you add ostension to it, you add the sensitive cues to it, then the information get, get transmitted uh, it, it, it is, is different. Uh, um, and, and this, uh, Yuri didn't send me what I asked him, is, uh, I would have, so, so if, if you have, uh, let's take an example of which was described in, in one of Yuri's talk. Uh, so so you, you have the, the experimental looking at uh, two objects, uh, one with a, 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 a smile, the other with an expression of, 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 of disgust. Uh, uh, when, uh, in one condition, this is uh, uh, done with an ostensive cue, that is, uh, the, 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 the child is looked at, uh, maybe called, uh, you talk to him, whatever, you attract his attention, you make it clear that you're communicating uh, to him, in the other case, you're not. Uh, uh, otherwise, the behavior which contains information is the same. Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, as was pointed out from the experience, results, in one condition, in one condition, uh, this is interpreted, the information that the child picks from that is that the, uh, uh, the character, the experimenter, has a preference for the object on the right as, a, or, or, uh, as opposed to the object on, on the left. In the other condition, when you have a tension, uh, uh, the child picks information that the object on the right is more desirable, is a better object. Uh, than the object on the left. So, so it, uh, you have a generalization. You go from episodic to semantic, to use uh, uh, um, the language of, 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 of Gregor and Buell. Uh, uh, that's uh, 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 something that is directly explained uh, uh, in terms of relevance theory, uh, uh, of communication, the second principle of relevance, the, the communicative principle. Uh, if it's just, you just observe a behavior of an agent, uh, then it's not being communicated to you. So you, you know, in as much as you care, you're learning something about the observer, and there's no ground, you don't have grounds to generalize uh, to something that might be more relevant to you to know which is better, not because then nobody's been vouching for the, 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 the fact that one is intrinsically better or generally better. The moment uh, you have communicative cues, then you have a presumption that it's relevant to you. And if in that situation, where you have a preference of experimenter with somebody you don't know, don't care about, are not particularly relevant to you, whereas uh, uh, which is the best of the two objects is relevant to you, that's uh, where you're know, going for what's relevant to you and assuming that this is what was intended. Uh, 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 that, that, that's where you will assume that this means that this is a better object than that one. Uh, 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 uh. And in order, order to test that, of course, all you have to do is change the context and make it relevant to know what are the preferences of the experimenter, and then you will reverse the interpretation. So again, you can manipulate uh, the, the, uh, the, the context in such a manner that what is most relevant to a child will be either episodic information or uh, 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 general semantic information, and, and, and I predict that you will get what you want. In the absence of, uh, of, of reason for a child to be in episodic information of that kind, of what does the experiment prefer, who cares? Uh, of course, the, the, the more general inf information, uh, uh, the semantic information, will be the most relevant one, the one that, that will be picked, yes, then. It's possible, but it's also possible that, for the, particularly for infants, um, there's a built-in bias, because the infant doesn't really need to know uh, what the individual preferences are as uh, as much as it needs to acquire the semantic information. So that it could be that ostensive cues always lead to uh, the presumption of semantic information. It's, it's quite possible, but you see it's okay. I'm coming to this possibility, and I'm, I'm quite willing to entertain it. So in many contexts, given the communicative principle of relevance, ostension foster a pedagogical interpretation. Uh, uh, because that's what's relevant to uh, the address particularly the child who is more interested in acquiring new, new knowledge and, 
than most adults except those who come to summer schools. Uh, um, so, so you get that interpretation in, in any case. So if, if you just have you know, relevance guided communication as I described it, you will find this. Still, uh, it's possible that uh, there's an involved bias in favor of uh, pedagogical interpretation. Uh, 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 it's possible. I, you know, it's, it ha would have, it, the way you would tackle it, not that easy, is to, if it goes beyond what you would expect on, on general relevance ground. But, if it, but that possibility is just like danger signals. I mean, you, again, different certain types of interpretations are privileged. Certain types of things are more relevant anyhow. So if, a, if there's a period in the life of a child where she's most interested in semantic interpretation, not so much about the mental states or the preferences of uh, people she interacts with, uh, uh, that will, you know, she's going for what's relevant for her and assuming that this is what is intended. So that it's quite, ju ju just as, in some, you know, again, interpret uh, interpretation are biases by the kind of initial weight given to our disposition modules and so on. So certain things are of greater interest to us and our interpretation goes in this way. So there may be a built-in, evolved bias, uh, it's a possibility uh, uh, for pedagogical interpretation or for, for a semantic interpretation rather than, 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 than uh, episodic or whatever, you, uh, whichever way you want to characterize it. So it's, it's a genuine possibility and which uh, wouldn't be surprising uh, for the reasons that, that, that uh, you and Gilgo have given and there are good, there may be selective pressure for that. So that's, that's a, a, a sensible I, I, hypothesis. You may have a stronger hypothesis which is the one that they favor and that is that ostensive inferential communication evolved first and in fact also ontogenetically developed first for pedagogy. Uh, and I, I find that much, much less uh, 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 plausible or compelling. Uh, uh, and the reasons, uh, the reason why, why I feel like this, uh, uh, I can describe in, 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 a, in a simple manner uh, uh, by, by, by an analogy. I mean, if you think of the function of the, the, the legs in, in human beings, uh, uh, so, so you might say, oh, you know, they're very useful to run away from predators. And that's uh, the, 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 what causes the selective passion for it. Or they're very useful to, to reach food. Uh, or they're uh, very useful to, to reach to, you know, to find mates. So, so they, they do, there are a lot of, of things we do with our, our, our walking, uh, 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 which is, of course, uh, quite important for, for, for fitness. Uh, but, but, but the, basically, the function of our, our legs is locomotion. Uh, uh, it's a general function which uh, delivers lots of very different results. And the fact that many of these results have contributed to, uh, 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 to, to fitness I mean, uh, uh, um, is relevant, of course. I mean, if there was no, no benefit in, in, locom in locomoting, we wouldn't be locomoting, we'd be like plants. Uh, 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 and it can be also the case that some specific f uh, f effect of locomoting uh, uh, contributes to the specific forms that lo locomoting takes. If you think of running, for instance, it may be particularly uh, evolved in relationship to either running away from predator or pursuing prey. Uh, 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 so, 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 so there may be specific ways in which we run which are, have to do with more specific functions. So it's possible uh, uh, that, that, that uh, so some aspect of the way we communicate uh, have to do with some specific benefits, uh, 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 advantages of communication, in particular pedagogy. Uh, uh, but still, you will, you will still, on this, you have, you know, the, the function of our communicative ability is to communicate. Uh, uh, and communicate serves so many different uh, functions, some very local, some are more general, and so on. It could be that the, the pedagogical function uh, may have contributed to some fine tuning of, of, of a system. But, but, but the notion, on the other hand, that it would have evolved, you know, like, like you know, walking might evolve just to run away from predators, then we discover we could also use it to run after prey, is a, not a very plausible one. And I feel the same, it's not an argument, I'm just expressing my, uh, the way I look at it. Uh, same thing for communication, I think there's a general communicative ability, it may be fine-tuned to some of the particular advantages that it uh, provides, uh, uh, but it's still a general ability which has evolved as a general ability. Uh, uh, so, now, which of the two you, you decide? So, Gary, is starting first. Okay. Yeah, I just want to mention that the argument is a little bit more subtle than just uh, pointing out that communication is good for everybody. So, I mean, <laughs> not at least all of the things, because you already already said that. For example, that the, med, the, the very fact that human communication is a study, and human communication is the only type of communication in any working room which can convey semantic knowledge. Uh, I mean, it, uh, it, it could be just a coincidence, right? But uh, uh, we, we, we see that yeah, locomotion exists in many 
a tárgy be lehetetlen előből. Tehát osztályzit kommunikáson, a kommunikáció szabadik voltak kontent, na, tehát szóval és ezt tényleg kéne, aki koincident tegye el, hogy egy kaptuk elő. And also, we could have some argument actually deriving the specific features of the osztályzit kommunikáson, ami how it works, the actual mechanisms from the Intrinsically, as a general-purpose thing, to evolve for one of its possible functions, uh, it's not that easy to deliver. And, uh, and you, know, you may want to pursue the uh, hypothesis. I don't think you've come up with, with anything that's kind of not done. So, for instance, the point you're making that, that, that ostensible inferential communication is good for, for uh, provides the possibility of con conveying semantic contents in a way. It provides po po the possibility of, of place to begin with of novel contents as opposed to typically code of animal communication where you have a repertoire of content that can be communicated and so which are about it. So, so you communicate and you have a capacity to communicate that there is a certain type of predator in the environment so every time you do it it's about a specific instance of this general category so you have more or less a fixed set of messages or a fixed set of uh, finite set of messages or, uh, whereas uh, from an aspect of human communication it's, it's, it's unbounded uh, and it made particular about it for language, but it's already in intrinsically there is no. Uh, uh, so, 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 but that's useful just to, to, as much to talk about particulars as to talk about general. So you can d describe specific situations in a way that uh, combine concepts and so on and so on. In a way, uh, whether it be to talk about episodic facts or, or general facts, uh, 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 just uh, as much. I indeed, one aspect of ostensive inferential communication so, or, 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 or of the issue is it, it permits, <coughs> it beats for this problem. problem. It, it allows the emergence and the, uh, to, to develop concepts uh, which are not part of the initial repertoire uh, through, through communication and so on. That's another story. Uh, um, the, 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 uh, uh, to say that it's function to do so or to communicate about this, no, again, it's uh, it, what I'm trying to say is. is um, you're making a very specific hypothesis, uh, the necessity of which is not obvious because basically most of the things that you're describing and which are present and important pedagogy are, in a sense, delivered by ostensive international communication. And again, there's no problem on the other of Moreover, adding a disposition of, you know, both a helping disposition on the part of teacher and interest in being so helped on the part, part of learner, so kind of the two aspects of a pedagogical disposition uh, in the picture. But making the mechanism of communication itself, uh, I think, involves just under the pressure, selective pressure for this one function, uh, uh, and argue that its characteristics uh, you know, show, uh, show that. And, uh, are good arguments for that. I think you're, you're far from uh, 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 making more than hand waving in that direction. Again, you might be right, and it's not, it's not impossible, but I, I find the, the argument very weak, in particular because there is no, uh, uh, just as for locomotion, I mean, you have a very general mechanism. We know we use it extreme, in an extremely general, general way. Uh, children have much more interaction about uh, local particulars than about semantic information. Uh, you know, about where they have the teddy bears and that they're hungry now and so forth. So most communication at all ages and among all people is about local particulars. I mean, pedagogy in any case, in the best of cases, the most pedagogic kind of interaction uh, uh, occupies only a small part of uh, what we do with our communicative ability. So, um, again, you may pursue the, uh, you, you, I mean, you, I think you have a hunch with some initial arguments. You, you don't have a, 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 a in my, again, in my judgment. And I don't see, uh, to put it in another, uh, to put it another way, 
you know, way of looking at it is what you've done with, with, with your, your experiments, your, your ideas, and so on, is make a fundamental major contribution to the study of ostensive inferential communication in general. I mean, think of the, the, the last talk you gave about all, all the ostensive cues in the first year of life. Nobody had done that. Uh, and it's, it, it's a you know, major, I and mean, it really amplifies <laughs> what we understand about uh, uh, ostensive inferential communication. So you may decide that your work is just about pedagogy, you might say that's big enough, uh, or, uh, uh, or that in fact what you're doing is, is renewing, enlarging, and, and deepening understanding of ostensive communication in general, both in the way it functions, the way it develops, and in one of its particular uses or function, which is pedagogy. So that makes your work even more relevant. <laughs> <laughs> I, I certainly agree with this last bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I also agree that, that strictly speaking, our, our work is kind of showing this. It's really, this is kind of speculation. Okay. However, you know, in, within the world of, of uh, uh, relevant speculation, so I don't necessarily, you know, it's, I mean, there's something, uh, if, if your argument would be that this, kind of what you describe like a bias, will be just kind of automatically provided by relevance computation under the circumstances that we, you know, that I, that I think is very, that, that's an, I'm, I'm, I don't know whether that is true, but this is the thing where, where you would want to uh, kind of um, um, test that. So, so for example, you know, when you say that, that in the ostensive cues, in the uh, emotion, ex referential emotion, uh, the expressive situation, okay, so you, you, uh, they have the presumption of relevance, so, so, so it is relevant for the child, that's why it's kind of learning the semantic information. But you know, but, but what we are testing is a pro-social act, so, so you may s say that since the, the child is kind of pro-social by evolutionary design, or, mm -hmm. you know, um, it is, uh, uh, it's when he learns something uh, about uh, um, a kind, then he will apply that knowledge, assume that knowledge universally to others, and that will drive his pro-social behavior. But this is like more or less what we are saying. This is like, uh, you know, there is a, um, that, uh, so, so if we kind of separate this out from, uh, uh, from uh, so basically if, if relevance uh, principle will always give you uh, semantic information as, as the primary in this situation, uh, unless you uh, make particular manipulations that make episo episodic more relevant, then you know you, you got a point. In terms of the evolutionary argument that the walking, I mean, I, I just you know I'm I'm, uh, I'm not well versed enough in evolution theory to really come up quickly with good example. Is it is it the fact that if you have a, a general purpose ability, an ability that you can really apply for many different things, then it's more plausible to say that that has been selected as a general purpose ability. There couldn't that be, no, that, 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 you know, I mean, it's just not, it doesn't strike me as a very... Of course, it's not, there's nothing automatic about it, but I mean, the, the, the uh, 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 well, you know, the, the, the point, as you said, if you want, to, let's avoid, I, li I like evolutionary psychology. But I don't like, but, but the, the unusual objection, which is often true, is that there are just those stories in a bad sense of the term. Of course, it's always speculation, but you have good speculation, bad speculation. So, so, so uh, you, 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 the, uh, as it could be like this, and there are some reason to think it's like this, and there are hunches like this, and so on, that's just not good enough. That, that's, uh, and I, I don't have, since I don't share the hunch, so I don't even expect that there will be a much better story in, in this direction. A good story for this, yes, a good story for that, no. But again, I mean, but I, you don't, you don't have what you have now is a kind of uh, uh, hand waving in the direction of, uh, of an evolutionary story of having ostensive inferential communication uh, evolved under the selective pressure for pedagogy. So there's lots of other issues in, involved in that. Then we go into it better than ever. Um, I just point out that the the phylogenetic claim with regard to the chronology is very difficult. To on the basis of evidence of design, okay? Um, so that uh, you, your evidence could be even better about the relationship between ostensive cues and pedagogy than it is. Uh, I mean, I think it's pretty good now, but it could be even better. And that wouldn't 
necessarily speak right. to the question of chronology, right? Um, Either because uh, be, because existing adaptations can be modified so as to be better suited to a novel purpose, right? Um, uh, I mean, bipedal locomotion is one example. So as as Dan has said, it serves many purposes, right? Um, uh, some people have argued that uh, one uniquely human niche is the ability to run down prey um, in a hot environment because we have a whole bunch of thermoregulatory uh, mechanisms that other mammals don't have. And bipedal locomotion is very efficient for endurance running rather than for short sprinting. So uh, quadrupedal animals beat us in short distances, but we beat them in the long. Right? That says that we have special purpose design for endurance running. It doesn't say whether endurance running came first, as it were, or whether it was a modification of an existing design. Now, it's very unlikely that it came first, just based on a bunch of other things about the way our shoulders work, that you know, we were probably, radiators were probably swung underneath the trees. Right? This is just an example that it's, it's really, really hard to argue the chronology on the basis of design. The way that you can argue the chronology is on the basis of, of, of a taxonomic comparison, right? So if you see an ancestral trait that's shared across um, distantly related species, and then you see a modification in a specific species that isn't present in the across species, then you can say um, the, the ancestral trait, by that's why we call it the ancestral trait, came first, right? Um, but just evidence of design doesn't usually get you there. So that's why you know, I think that I fully agree, and I think that you're, you're, you're attempting to do something that may not even be feasible. Even if you're right, you might have sufficient argument, and, and I won't go into that. I have lots of reason not to, which has to do because the notion is for pedagogy assume that you have a bootstrapping problem, but it's another kind of issue. I just want to go on, I just, but you know, I, I just wanted to say that look, looking into details of relevant theory is relevant to discussing pedagogy, I mean, you know, the more precise you use it, the more precise comes, comes, comes the, 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 the questions. So I want to suggest, now I'm moving from uh, 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 interactions to face-to-face to -face interaction, simple interaction to, to what happens at, at the population level. I want to suggest the third principle of relevance, uh, not yet published, uh, 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 we'll be aware of the time. Uh, 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 it's, it's a kind of simple, uh, uh, almost, again, it's a description, it's not a normative principle. Uh, and it says that every link in the causal chain of its distribution, cultural information has been relevant enough to be effectively transmitted. And let me be more specific. When you have information, cultural information is, is, is transmitted. Again, it's transmitted with a lot of constructive process at every end, it's not copied. Uh, 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 and to be effective, it transmit doesn't have to, again doesn't have to be copied. It just have to pro produce an input which is enough to for the, the information to to, to, to be uh, to, to to spread, not necessarily by copying, but by uh, remaining in the vicinity of an attacker. That's that, 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 that's good enough. But 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 but, but, but uh, 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 the, the tendency to to look for relevant information in general and in communication in particular will just filter. We, we, we act at every step uh, on the field of information that gets that spread, and, and it's a very powerful filter. Uh, so, so, so re relevant selects uh, consideration of relevant selects information throughout. So what it does, in fact, uh, uh, um, since most of the time what's relevant to us is relevant for local reasons, it's locally relevant. Uh, uh, and we're concerned mostly about the here and now, and most of, most of the time. So most of, of, of information is relevant enough uh, to be transmitted locally, but not to be widespread. And this is what happens. Um, the great majority of acts of communication uh, uh, play only a very, very marginal role in the spreading of culture. Uh, we may marginally reinforce it, but, but, but they're, not, uh, uh, they, they, they're, not, they, they're not doing that. Uh, 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 in a strong sense. Uh, and, and so what's interesting is wh why and how, what circumstances do you have uh, 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 relevance being maintained uh, uh, through time and, and, and social space? Uh, so, so, so that basically the same information, with all the modification on the way, with the back and forth that uh, Nicolas Clédier was describing uh, yesterday, uh, 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 how, how this may nevertheless uh, uh, achieve stability over time. So, 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 so things which uh, get widespread are in some ways uh, re relevant to, 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 to wider groups, community, or networks. 
uh, and, and the degree and, uh, and, uh, of spread is linked to the commonality uh, uh, of relevance. But there are subtle aspects to that. But I will have, I think, a couple of questions there. And, and, and uh, uh, yes, uh, first. Okay, so I was wondering if it's not possible to be something stable or not because it's an unpredictable, because sort of the information goes on. So I forget it, but the more I'm reminded by somebody else. So this kind of stability would be, wouldn't it be possible? Sure, you can, you can, you, there are, especially if you have an institutional framework where you're reminded of something that's not very good for memory, but there are higher order regulative representation that cause people to reproduce because there's a benefit in doing it. So now it's not the relevance of the content itself, but it's the relevance of being in a position to display the content. So if you think of nonsense formula, which are using the uh, Latin formula, or Hebrew formula, if you can speak Hebrew, uh, uh, that are used in, 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 a, in a ritual. Uh, they themselves are, are of no relevance because they're not even understood, uh, but the ability to, to, to pro pronounce them at the right moment is relevant, so the, and, and so because of a higher order. Uh, so, so yes, you can, you can, there are lots of uh, such co uh, complexity that, uh, that, 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 that come in. Yes, Dan? Um, so related to that, but maybe a, 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 I would hope a little more general observation, which is that if the, the relevance of a given piece of information is uh, contextually dependent, where part of that context is the existing cultural information in the individual's head, right? that means that um, there can be feedback relationships between bits of cultural information that mutually determine one another's relevance. And although it's out of fashion in cultural anthropology now, it used to be the case that anthropologists were very concerned with things like ethos, that is, that the integrated nature of different pieces of cultural information. And I mean, this perspective suggests that you should expect that to be the case, that is, culture should be well integrated because cultures that are well integrated will contain information that has higher fitness in the, in the transmission process because it will be mutually determinative of relevance. I love it, I love it. Now, now we have done first the defending traditional anthropology and you were quite... <laughs> <laughs> I have a PhD in traditional. I know, I know. You know it's, it's fine, that's also why you're here. But, but, but uh, we all, you know, the idea is that we get... Uh, no, no, it's exactly... So, so what, what I think happens, and that, that has... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> points, as if, let me just finish answering. Uh, uh, that and then, so, 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 no, so, so, indeed, a certain degree of integration will be based on this relevance configuration just the way you say. I don't think it will give you a kind of integration for lots of reasons that traditional anthropologists would expect, but a, a lot of, of, of uh, integration, community of style, of ethos, uh, uh, correspondence uh, 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 within culture are in terms of relevance, even because the effects are on the effort side, if you think of it, the the, the, the parallelism that you get a lot in, in culture, they, 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 they give you a benefit in terms of, of, of cost. So indeed, a lot of the aspects on which traditional anthropologists are focused uh, are at least partly explainable in those terms. Yes? First of all, I'm not clear what you mean when you talk about traditional anthropology, but one of the problems I, I, I see with the whole procedure is that I think an anthropologist like myself has no problem with your whole scheme. But that it somehow, at every step, leaves aside the interesting questions. I mean, how the selection of relevance takes place, that is interesting. But we have it replaced by, by formalism that it is taking place. And even when I sort of think, when I compare Grice and you, I mean, all right, for a, your, your, your formulation is much more elegant than that of Grice. Uh, but when Bryce talks about the cooperative principle, he's talking about uh, he, he's talking about something which is extremely, which suggests all sorts of hypotheses about the nature of the social, which you somehow lose when you say well it's all a matter of uh, indicating uh, relevance. So I think you know an evolutionary story can't be just dealt with by Occam's razor. There's a quote I like from Borges. He says, uh, "An hypothesis doesn't uh, doesn't have to be true; it just should be instinct." So basically, that's what you're suggesting. Grice is less true, but it's more instinct. Uh, uh, I, th I think it's less instinct too. In fact, uh, uh, look, first, what instinct or not instinct depends on your interest. Uh, se se second, of, you know, if, yes. Yes. Uh, 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 yeah, this is the very general level. If you want an application, there's a paper by Maurice Bloch and Dan Sproul, for instance, which uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Maurice Bloch uh, uh, 
but you, know, you can go from a very general to more specific. So it, I'm talking at a very, very general level, and I, I fully understand that you know this doesn't give you a direct key for. Uh, 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 yeah, but what worries me is, is the way it's done. You know, I mean, there's something incredibly interesting for all anthropologists in the pedagogy mm -hmm. principle, mm -hmm. whether it's right or wrong. One has a feeling that by saying, well, it's just a side to, to, to the relevance principle, we can just move on to the formalism, much the same way as there is the same relationship between um, <coughs> between Rice and you. I mean, it, the thing which I think Larry was really raising, and, and, and here, and, and, and along, is really, if relevance is, is fine, I mean, it seems to me right, uh, then the really interesting job, I think both for psychologists and, and, and anthropologists, is how is the selection, how does the selection take place? And for anthropologists, it's more what's particularly interesting is how the historical process, which is being transmitted, affects how the, I, I how the transmission takes well, place. I agree with you. I'm an anthropologist. Yeah, but, but, yes, no, no, I know. Uh, but uh, I'm just sort of saying I can accept the whole story of our books. I mean, I think it is, it, it's beautifully elegant. But it shouldn't be used for sort of setting aside, really. Uh, I would never do a thing. Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, what do you know about cooperation? What do you know about uh, uh, I, I, what do you know about pedagogy? I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just give two kind of a bit more concrete illustrations. Take, take the case of, of the public representation that is like utterances, rituals, pictures, and so on. Uh, and one of one of the ways in which things happen is. In, in which they may achieve relevance and stability go, uh, uh, across long chains of distribution is by being relevant in different ways to different people in different situations. So you have the same public representation. I mean, that's the point I made in my first read book, which is rethinking symbolism. If you, if you, if you take uh, cultural uh, symbols, public displays, uh, uh, expressions of beliefs, of ritual, and so on, uh, uh, and the classical anthropological way to ask what is the meaning of this thing, and, uh, and the point I was making, put in other terms, you have very different meanings, very different interpretations for different people, and what's more, uh, uh, and for the same people at different moments in their life, what's more, that's a factor in, in their cultural success. Uh, uh, so I think that that's uh, a proof, you know, myth, the symbol, in fact, many normative principles which can be interpreted differently by different people or in different situations, different moments in their life and so on. So the very stability uh, of a public a bit of culture in this case uh, is based on, on the variability or even the instability uh, of the mental counterpart. So people converge on the same ritual, share the same ritual, s s s same, uh, share the same expression of, of faith or the same public norms, when in fact, uh, and, and do that more, even more easily because they're capable of uh, 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 interpreting them each in, the, in, in, the, in their own way. And conversely, you have case of mental representation when it's the other way around. So, so t t you know, one way in which mental representation may achieve relevance and stability was long chain of distribution is by interpreting the same variety of quite different behavior and situation. And a good example of that, which came up already in discussion, is ethnic and gender stereotypes in a society where the public expression uh, is, is being banned. Uh, uh, so they get expressed in an indirect way for lots of behaviors and that kind of things that Larry was talking about. So wh what you get is, uh, and I, I drew this thing in, in our discussion group yesterday, you know, you might think everything mental and be public here. So, so that, that the cultural chain, you have an alternation of just mental, public, and with, with, with uh, uh, or, or similar, but you may get the pulse may be different. So, 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 so if you take the, your religious symbols, uh, they, they're very stable, uh, 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 but the mental interpretation that, 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 uh, uh, that caused people to produce this symbol may be quite diverse, and the way we interpret the biologists will be quite diverse, and they convert on this uh, com common form of expression, which is precisely successful because it's, a, it's open to a wide variety of interpretation. Uh, 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 so, and you can have the opposite beat, uh, 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 where, 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 where mentally people think, oh, the so and so are really, the gypsies are really not uh, as good as we are, uh, uh, but you're not allowed to say it. So, so in fact, you, it's, it's being transmitted through a lot of implicit uh, uh, forms of behavior, discrimination, attitudes, uh, bodily behavior, and so on, uh, 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 which are enough to, uh, which convert because they're all highly, for relevance reasons, they're highly relevant 
Uh, so, so here, sorry, we're talking about relevance in this uh, Here, the relevant interpretation are the relevance guide people quite different interpretation. Here, relevance guide people to interpret all these different behaviors in the same way because they have this bias that uh, there's a cognitive bias that, uh, that, that uh, Larry was, was talking about. And I did have a few uh, more things to say about that because it's time, time if we want to have a few minutes discussion before the break. Uh, I, 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 uh, it's, uh, what I want to, to remember the topic was about uh, uh, relevance and modularity. Uh, just let me just say, let's, let's just say, say, say a word. Let me just say a word. I assume and, uh, one of the readings was about the role of modules in stabilizing culture. It's a paper, a joint paper with, with, with Larry. Uh, I assume that uh, uh, at length that we have a rich model organization uh, uh, with uh, modules that all having an innate basis but being uh, uh, largely developed in a learning and typically cultural context which comes from much of the variability. And that, that, that m m modules are a factor of, of, of uh, uh, stabilization of culture because precisely they render, and now let me re describe it in a relevant term, uh, information which is in the, the domain of a module, uh, 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 which, gets, which meets the input condition of the actual domain, which picks uh, as, the, the, uh, as the input condition of, of the module and gets picked up by a module, uh, precisely activates uh, a, comp a strong competitor uh, uh, in, in, inside the brain for, 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 for resources. I mean, where we have modular uh, dispositions, uh, 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 the information relevant to our module is indeed relevant to us and, and, and is a good candidate for, for attention. A lot of cultural at attention gets stabilized by, by models because it falls in its, uh, in, in, in its actual domain. Uh, uh, and again, uh, 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 so, so, so it's, if we have a model organization uh, of, of cognition, that means that not all information is equal. Uh, uh, we, we, have a, we start with a mental landscape which gets elaborated in cognitive development, uh, which, which gives a, a, a greater weight, greater presumption of relevance, if you want, to certain types of information, domain, information in certain domains having certain kind of property, which may be either just fitting, uh, uh, and it, I think also it varies in, in cognitive development. So initially, uh, uh, the child is indeed a learner, has these modules which are basically learning instincts and which are begging for information that will precisely allow to go from the, the learning mechanism to the learned, to the acquired uh, body of knowledge. Uh, uh, the more you get uh, this body of knowledge are constituted, the more uh, you get relevance by, by challenging basically uh, 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 information that's already acquired and the kind of uh, 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 counterintuitive things that, that uh, uh, Pascal has, uh, has worked on in great detail uh, 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 um, it, it becomes relevant precisely once you have kind of initial knowledge base and you go against it. Uh, 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 in very specific way, the way which are really challenging, that also becomes very attention arresting, uh, comes with high presumption of relevance in other terms of cognitive effects, uh, uh, and, and so on. So, so given the, the, the uh, uh, what, and if you are anti modularist if you have another view of the organization of the human mind, if you think it's flat, for instance, that we are not prepared for any specific type of knowledge at all, or if you think there are some large domain specific uh, uh, domains for which there's some uh, disposition and otherwise. That, that, that's it. So whichever f view you take uh, uh, of the organization of the human mind, uh, uh, and you combine it uh, uh, with the cognitive principle of relevance, uh, it will make different predictions about the, the possibility of stabilization of, of, stabilization of information. Uh, uh, the more structure you have in the mind, structure which is in, in, in important ways content-specific, domain-specific, uh, the, the, the more uh, you, you, you have elements to explain this, uh, to help explain the stability uh, of culture, in spite of the fact uh, on which I talked the first time and on which uh, uh, Nicola Gredea spoke <coughs> yesterday, uh, which, which is that, 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 that uh, a pre preservative mechanism uh, are not going to explain by themselves and not by a long, ma wide margin uh, the, the relative stability of culture. I mean, of course, contribute to the fact that we are, we can pick information from us, we can to some extent reproduce, we can imitate up to a certain degree, we can understand what is communicated. Of course, it's crucial. Uh, without this, you wouldn't have culture at all. But it's just—it's typically about picking local information to our, for our local uh, uh, purpose and what's uh, immediately relevant to us, and, and not in, in, about reproducing, contributing to long chains of cultural information. Uh, uh, and nevertheless, it does uh, stabilize 
uh, uh, contribute to the stabilization of culture. To, to, to help explain that, I think if you take in uh, 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 the notion that we have uh, uh, strong cognitive biases, which I would argue are delivered by this model of organization of our uh, human mind. Uh, co by cognitive bias, I mean strong specific interests with specific ways of constructing, interpreti interpreting interpretation in, in, for in, in different domains, together with, with this very strong bias for, for, for relevance. Uh, then, then you get uh, the two main types of factors of, uh, of uh, cognitive factors of attraction uh, that, that explains cultural stability. Uh, just as a, a reminder, mental, cognitive, psychological factors of attraction are only half of a factor of attraction. They are ecological factors of attraction which are not less important. You're not going to do to derive culture from psychology. Psychology plus ecology equals anthropology. Thank you. Proclamation of a political idea has to be printed on one page of a newspaper. Una Bomber got that, for instance. Uh, 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 for those of you who remember Una Bomber. Uh, 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 well, it, it gets printed in millions of copies and <laughs> goes to people's home and doesn't make it to cultural and it doesn't become cultural because you need intake and for that you need relevance. He became one. So, so, what? He became one. Well, he became well known, but that's he, he wanted his ideas to be well. I, I, actually, I, I know one person who thinks he was right, but <laughs> <laughs> he was an evolutionary psychologist. Good friend of mine, too. I'm sorry. <laughs> Things happen. Uh, uh, so so I, 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 it's a good point. I mean, you, 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 one really has to look at the structure of the chain of distribution, and you're quite right, broadcast is, especially in modern work, quite, 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 quite important. But I still think that, that you get filtering for relevance in those cases. Yes, so, uh, coming back to Pascal's question, uh, like I uh, wrote a lot to work, and your paper was uh, very relevant to a paper I uh, presented a few uh, weeks ago in linguistics uh, using the humanity theory. And yeah, there the, my, my question was uh, when you, you produce or you learn, you might be stuck in local optima. So, a uh, model uh, that you re uh, present when or uh, mental representations can uh, bring to the same uh, public one and public, uh, some public representations can still converge to the same mental representation is also an uh, answer to the problems of, of errors on mm -hmm. transmissions. So like, like I, I, I know what my mental representation is, but I am unable to express it. Or I'm unable to exactly decode the public representation into just into some other representations. So uh, your model such as such a robustness uh, to, to deal with that was too. I, I, I think so. I, I would like to point out that this one, you could say that also to, to an interesting extent of the model of Boyan Richardson. Uh, if that uh, you know, was pointing out, you can have a strict uh, replicative model uh, uh, of the type. Uh, 
Dawkins suggests, if you look at Boyd and Richardson, uh, their model uh, uh, allows them for quite a bit of error and corrects it because people converge uh, either on majority opinion or prestigious individuals, and so they, this will eliminate a lot of error. I think we have more error on elimination if you want. Uh, if, in fact, what matters is not the copy, but that you seem to be seen to be an attractor so that people may make lots of mistakes, but as long as they seem to be seen to be an attractor, uh, you get stability against without copy. It's a good question, but so Grice assumed that uh, uh, it was, uh, he was talking about conversation, it was, uh, and maybe talk conversation, but of course we want to extend it to interpretation of, of utterances in general, communication in general. So he assumed that, that, that uh, in a verbal exchange, the interlocutors share a goal, at least a direction, there's a common direction of the exchange, and that every uh, uh, contribution, every utterance in, in the exchange must be a contribution to this goal or to this common direction. Uh, now, of course, it's quite often, almost gen generally the case that, uh, particularly in a the conversation, there is a common goal or a common direction of conversation. Uh, but, are, but it's not an, a necessity uh, uh, that this be so, and there are verbal exchanges which are just antagonists, uh, where there is no common goal. At one extent of insults, uh, which are communication too, there is no common goal. Uh, and, and, and more certainly, there may, not, there may be an appearance of common goal, but in case of deception, there is no genuine common goal, and so on and so on. So, so, so I don't think that it's generally true that you have a common goal. When you have a common goal, then that's part of the context and relevance to this common goal is one of the uh, ways in which relevance is being achieved. But again, as a general property of verbal exchange, I think it's, it's misguided. So, 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 so uh, uh, but even when you insult uh, people, even if you're trying to, uh, in, in, uh, you meet, trying to mislead people, or you have divergent interests, you don't have a common direction, in fact, you're, you're, you're negotiating from opposite point of view, or whatever, uh, 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 in, in all these cases, there is one common interest. Uh, if it's communication at all, that is, the communicator wants to be understood and the other C wants to understand. But deception uh, would not be possible if the other person was not expecting. No, but that, but, but, uh, the, the, you, you're right. But, but let's just take, take, take insults. I mean, well, all I'm trying to, uh, the, the, the study of deception is a bit more complex, so let's leave it aside. Just, I'm trying to say what the only point on which indeed. Uh, 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 that the interlocutors have a common interest. It's one on which they coordinate. It's not they don't cooperate in the sense that they're not paying, a, uh, uh, they're not doing it their cost. They have a common goal, uh, uh, and the common goal is comprehension. The speaker wants to, to, to be comprehended, and the, the other C wants to cooperate. Or else they're opting out of communication altogether. Uh, and, and, and that is uh, driven by the fact that once, uh, by, by relevance by itself. So, so, you do, so we don't need the cooperative principle. We think it's a mistake as a general statement about verbal communication. Uh, uh, also, I mean, if you read text from an uh, ancient author and so on, the notion of a common goal is kind of... So you, again, you don't need, you don't need a, 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 the desire to be understood and, and, to, and, and to understand is, is there in all verbal communication. It's guided by the, the principle of relevance, which is a descriptive principle. It says every utterance comes with a presumption of its relevance. It doesn't say that it is relevant, that the presumption is justified. It says, and it says you cannot opt out of that. I cannot communicate to you and say it's not worth your attention. I mean, I may say that, but it's rhetorical. There's no, there's no way you can genuinely communicate to people while at the same time wanting them to think that what you're saying is not relevant. Uh, uh, so, so it's automatically conveyed uh, by, by, by any act of communication, and it guides interpretation in the way we suggest. So, it does a lot of so it's, it's, a, it's different from Grice in two ways. First, we don't assume the, the cooperative principle, and second, we're giving this, it follows some description of properties of communication itself rather than from some ex extra normative rule uh, that, that, that would uh, hover above the communicative uh, in, in interaction. Of course, there are lots of uh, communicative interaction involves lots of norms, and cooperation is quite frequently in the Grice in sense, but that's not basic on our view. Yes, then. I want to return to your concluding remarks about ecology and psychology. It strikes me, maybe this is obvious already, but um, <clears throat> not, perhaps it's not to everyone that's worth expressing, um, that uh, the, the importance of uh, inter-coalition competition 
is going to constitute a source of ecological pressure that will favor uh, the emergence of public representations that are subject to multiple interpretations. So um, you, you uh, at the cognitive level, you described how multiple interpret the, the, the affordance of multiple interpretations can stabilize a public representation because it's relevant to different individuals. But um, operating in parallel to that, to the extent that those public representations organize coalitional behavior, um, the, the coalition that can recruit more members because its public representations afford multiple interpretations um, will have greater competitive ability than the coalition whose public representations has um, uh, fewer possible interpretations and hence less relevance to a, a, a smaller fraction of the population. And political parties, in, certainly in the United States, are a great example of this, right? I mean, the, 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 Republican, the members of the Republican Party or the avid supporters thereof often have virtually nothing in common with one another, and they have some very vague public representations. Uh, exit polls show that in the last presidential election, um, uh, one of the principal reasons that people voted for the Republican Party was moral values. But when you asked them what that meant, it turned out that across voters, there were mutually in inconsistent um, and entirely incompatible interpretations of what the moral agenda was. Right? But the Republican Party successfully positioned itself as the party of moral values and thereby recruited a larger coalition that's winning the intercoalitional competition. That's a very good, good point, you're right. I mean, there's this aspect which contributes to the explanation. Thank you. Yes. Maybe we should stop because uh, we've still a long, uh, long, hard day or whatever. Uh, so.